Have you ever noticed how simple it is to create high quality edits using the right programs? In today's video, you'll learn how to make high quality animations, just like Ed from Film Booth. This guy has the best YouTube growth tips, and he works so professionally. Let's get started. Let's start with the first animation for today, which I call the slide thumbnails. First, we will need a background similar to what he is using. Go to Canva and choose a white background. Reduce the opacity by 80%. Then search for a grid and import it onto your background. If necessary, change its size and color. Now, reduce the opacity of the grid by 80% as well. You can then export the video and start with the next step. This part is easy. You will need 5 to 6 thumbnails. So you can either screenshot them or use a thumbnail downloader to get higher quality images. Let's go back to Canva. We will now create the upper text. Choose a text element and type in your desired text. Select a font like Archivo Black and make it bold for a nice look. Also, increase the size of your text to make it more prominent. Change the text color to a nice shade of red. Now, move to the Elements section and search for a curved line. Choose one and change its color to the same shade of red. Place it under the text to create a stylish accent. Now, you can export this design. A quick tip for those who don't have Canva Pro. Change the background to green, so you can easily remove it later with CapCut. As you can see, Ed also includes other elements like arrows or mouse icons in his videos. You can easily find these elements in Canva or CapCut. Now we'll assemble the main elements he's using. For the sake of this video, I will do this in time-lapse so you can pause it at the end and take a screenshot. Don't forget to export the video after we are done. Now, we can import all the elements we've prepared so far. Since he's changing the other to texts in his animation, I'll handle those on my own in CapCut. Let's start by importing the default text. Choose the Arial font and make it bold. Type in hashtag, followed by the number one. Let's change the color to red for these two elements. Then select uppercase and type in the rest of your text. Change the color to black for the remaining text. The only thing we still need are animations for the texts. So let's go to the in animations. Scroll down a bit and you'll find the spring animation. Choose it and increase the duration by 0.9 seconds. After that, make a compound clip. Now, go to animation and select roll right. Reduce the animation to 0.4 for seconds. Next, go to Out Animation and choose Fade Out. Reduce it to 0 0.2 seconds. You can repeat this process one or two more times. Now, let's animate the main part of the video. Start by importing a thumbnail. Reduce the size of the thumbnail to 35 to 40 percent. Then, place the image to the left. Go to Animation and select the slide left animation. Reduce the duration to 0 0.2 seconds. Since its images shake a bit, Let's add an effect to mimic that. Head to Effects and choose Camera Shake. Reduce the range and speed by 5%. Now, repeat the process with the other two thumbnails, ensuring they are placed where the animation ends. Once done, make a compound clip of your images. This will be important in a few minutes. We're almost done with the first part of the animation. We just need to animate the mouse icon. Import the mouse icon into your timeline and place it somewhere at the bottom right of the video. Then, approximately three seconds after the last thumbnail comes in, make a keyframe on position. Move forward 40 frames, 
then drag it to the arrow on the left to make the movement more natural. Enable keyframe animation and choose auto curve. Close the keyframe animation. As soon as the mouse touches the icon, import a sound effect of a mouse clicking. Let's move on to the last part of the animation. Trim your compound clip to where the sound effect begins. Extend the clip by 0.3 seconds. Then go to animation and select slide left. Reduce the speed of the animation by 0.2 seconds. Now, repeat the entire animation process for the thumbnails. And that's it for now, we're done. Let's move on to our next video editing technique. Ed often uses this technique. Before we start with the next animation, let's set a few settings. Make sure to enable the free layer mode and also activate the proxy mode. If you want to know the benefits of the proxy mode, check the description. Now, let's continue with the tutorial. Go to CapCut's libraries and select backgrounds. Choose a background you like the most, and then increase its size to fit our video. After that, import default text. We'll work on each text separately. For the first one, choose the Oriole font. Don't forget to activate uppercase, so the letters are big. Type in a random number followed by percent. There's no need for animation for this text. Now, increase the scale of it and place it somewhere on the left. Next, let's move on to the middle text. Type in a short message and select Ariel as the font. This time, we'll use the type animation. Increase the animation duration to 0.9 seconds. Import the text 0.3 seconds after the first text shows up. You can practically copy the first text for the third text, but instead of the percentage, type in your strongest and most valuable word. Move the text right after the second text appears. We're done with the first part. Let's move on to the next part of this animation. Now import a video of yourself or the person you're making this video about. Apply the chroma key and choose auto cutout. Now we have a video without a background. Adjust the video so the text can fit in nicely. Add some sound effects for the texts and you're ready. We've had some interesting animations so far. Let's jump into the last animation for today. First, you'll need a graph. You can either screenshot one from your YouTube channel or download one from Google or Canva. After you have your graph, import it into your background. Then increase the size of your background by 120 to 150 percent. Now reduce the opacity by 70 percent. Next, go to effects and apply the black noise effect. After that, go to adjustments and increase the brightness by 20 percent. At this point, it's pretty straightforward. If you have a video, use the auto cutout function. If you have an image, use the chroma key function. Place the image or video on the highest point of your graph. Then make a keyframe on position. Move 40 frames forward by pressing the shift and the right arrow button. Now drag the video to the bottom of the graph. To make the animation smoother, adjust the keyframe animation. Choose auto curve for both sides. And that's it, we're done for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more content. Feel free to leave your thoughts or questions in the comments below. I love hearing from you. And of course, stay tuned for the next video. Until then, take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.